What's up guys, Balkan Architect here and in this video I'm going to be talking about the five types of programs that every architect needs to know. Now don't worry, don't be afraid, you don't have to learn all of them. You just need to be kind of aware that they all exist and you need to be aware of what they're for. So when you need something specific done, you know what to learn. The most important thing you should take away from this video is knowing which program is best for which task. Now, in order to be efficient, you need to use the right program for the right task. A lot of these programs can be interchangeable for certain tasks. You can do something maybe in AutoCAD and Revit. You can do the same thing and have the same result. But you should see which of those two programs is the best option for the task at hand. So that's the important part. So, without further ado, let's get into the list. Number one, the bread and butter of our profession and that is a basic CAD program or basically a computer assisted design program. A drafting program for drafting in 2D or 3D. Now, I know I talk a lot about how BIM is the future and everybody should only learn BIM, but the truth is there is still a lot of demand for AutoCAD and CAD drawings and CAD drafters. So in order to get any job in the architectural profession, you really need to know one CAD program. This software is great because so many professions use it, so there is a ton of information out there and it's quite a simple program. You can basically learn all the basics in one afternoon and get started quickly and easy. Its main downside is that same simplicity. Because this is basically just a drafting program, it's not specifically tailored to architects. So some architecture specific task, tasks may take a longer time than if you were, would be working in some architecture specific software. <coughs> Rabbit. Number two is the future and that is BIM or building information modeling. What this means, this is basically a 3D model of a building that has some smart geometry. So all of the geometry carries some additional information on the cost of the material, type of the material and how should that element, 3D element, look in a section or a floor plan. So once you have your 3D model, you can easily cut it up into sections and floor plans and get all of the documentation documentation for your project. And one more thing, because of this smart geometry, all the materials carry all the information. So you can do cost analysis or other types of analysis quite easily when you have your BIM model. If you want to learn more about BIM, all the dimensions of BIM or why should you get started learning it today, check out the links in the description of this video. And as far as software goes for BIM, you really only have two options. You either have Autodesk Revit or you have Graphisoft's Archicad. Now I'm a Revit fanboy and that's what I prefer using and I consider it to be a better option overall. But you can decide for yourself which one is best for you. Number three is a photo editing software or Photoshop to be exact. Now, no matter what architects tell you, they usually tend to place style and aesthetics above all else and Photoshop is best for that. So Photoshop is basically a photo editing software that works with bitmaps. Now bitmaps is a fancy way to say an image that's made out of pixels, which are all the JPEG images pretty much and some other or PNG or something that you use like that. Now architects can use Photoshop in the design process if you want to test out certain material, how would it look like on a building really fast without having to create a material and then render it or if you want to place your 3D model inside of the site photo just to see how would it look like in the natural surroundings of the site. Also you can use it later on for presentation of your project or you can use it for some rendering post-production and much more. Photoshop is extremely popular these days and all architectural businesses use it so it's quite hard to get a job if you don't know how to use Photoshop and it's pretty much impossible to finish architecture school without some basic knowledge of Photoshop and most importantly Photoshop is one of the best tools for office humor and that's gotta be important. Number four is 3D programs. Now you're probably thinking weren't the first two 3D programs and yes and no. AutoCAD was more of a drafting program and uh, BIM programs were 3D programs plus a lot more. Now there are some 3D software that are just 
3D software. And these can be important for many different things. And you should only learn one of them if you really have a need for something that they do quite well. Let's start with SketchUp. The basic version of SketchUp is free to install on your computer and because it's extremely intuitive, it's the easiest software to learn out of all the programs that I'm talking about today. And it can be great if you have to, to model something quickly just to get some basic shape and test it out. It can be amazing for that. And also a great point for SketchUp is that there is a ton of free 3D models out there. Because it's a simple software, a lot of people are using it and uploading their 3D models to the internet and you can open the, the, the library inside of SketchUp and download directly into your 3D model. This is why interior guys love it because they can use it then to kind of take some furniture models, download them and place them into their rooms and then test out different combinations. Now the downside of SketchUp is basically that same simplicity. Because it's simple, having to do some some complex models can be very inefficient compared to softwares like BIM. But there are some plugins for SketchUp that attempt to make this easier. Rhinoceros is one of the programs that architects also like to use. Now Rhinoceros is amazing at modeling complex shapes. Now notice I said complex shapes and not complex modeled models. It's not really good at modeling anything too detailed, just like SketchUp, it's just inefficient. But if you have some complex warped shape, like some Zaha Hadid shape, it's amazing. It has this simple, elegant code and that coupled with uh, a lot of available plugins make it an amazing software if you have to model some complex geometry. And because it's it, this elegant and simple code, it will run smoothly even on a slow computer. 3ds Max is a software that's really popular with the interior guys. So this is an amazing software if you have to make some cool photorealistic renderings. This is basically an animation software or software for some 3D artists. It's not really made specifically for architecture, but interior guys like to use it because it makes just photorealistic renderings that are amazing for their clients. So unless you need to make some amazing photorealistic models, or need to make some animations, I wouldn't recommend learning this program. And keep in mind that you can always create your models inside of some software like Revit perhaps, and then load it into 3ds Max just to set up the materials and get some amazing renderings out of it. And finally, number five, and that is visual programming software. And at the time, we only have two options. We have Grasshopper for Rhinoceros or Dynamo for Revit. Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhinoceros and it's mainly used to create some amazing parametric design and some amazing geometry. It's very elegant and the connection between Grasshopper and Rhinoceros works extremely well so you can play around as long as you want and it will work amazingly. On the other hand, Dynamo is a software that's inside of Revit and it's visual programming for Revit and it can be used both for creating some amazing geometry, some parametric design and also to automate workflows. So that's another benefit. The downside is it doesn't have that great connection like Grasshopper and Rhinoceros have. Dynamo and Revit have a kind of, kind of bad connection and the software is still being developed and it tends to crash and whenever Dynamo crashes, Revit crashes with it and that's never a good option. And if you want to learn more about the Dynamo or visual programming in general, I suggest you check out the link in the description of this video where I talk more on that subject. Okay, so that was my list of the top five types of programs architects need to learn, but I thought I might add some honorable mentions. So number one is Lumion. Lumion is this amazing software that's great for creating some realistic renderings or walkthroughs and animations. And the best part about it is it's extremely easy to use. So you can learn it and use it and it's just like playing Sims. Another one is V-Ray. Now V-Ray is this rendering engine that can work inside of different types of software, 3D modeling software, so you can work, use it inside of 
uh, inside of Revit or SketchUp or 3ds Max. So whenever you have some 3D software where you don't uh, you don't really like the the stock rendering engine, you can download and install V-Ray and then use it to create create some amazing materials and some amazing renderings. Another great program to learn is Adobe Illustrator. Now this is a graphic design software and it's pretty much the best software for graphic design. So you can use it to create some amazing presentations for your work. And you can always use it to do some graphic design on the side. Also another one is Microsoft Word. Okay, okay, I know, you specifically decided to study architecture just so you don't have to write or read anything ever, but you will. And using Microsoft Word is probably the best option for writing. I see people all the time writing in Photoshop because that's what they know and that's what they use all the time, but it's extremely inefficient. Learn Word. Another one is Excel. Now, this is great for creating some tables and you will always have to create some tables, maybe for room sizes or for cost estimation or just to create to make some important life financial decisions. So learn Excel, if not for architecture, it will certainly come in useful at some point. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching and please tell me in the comment section below. Have I missed any software? What do you know? What do you use? And what do you plan to learn in the future? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video and I will see you tomorrow.